About three weeks ago, I showed you some 3D printed Panzer 1 tracks as a proof of concept. Today it's time for a deep dive with upgraded designs, all new variants and more up-to-date hardware as well as better suited processing of the prints. Finally, I would like to compare them against Trekken, TriStar and Atelier, having a proper follow-up so to speak and putting an end to this for some time at least. If you don't have a resin printer yet, no worries, you will still learn a lot about Panzer 1 tracks and its accessories, as well as 3D printing itself. So please check the description box down below and subscribe to my channel for weekly German armor in 135th scale. All STL files are available to STL level patrons. I'll keep up rolling them out, all tracks I come across in a digital format, so you guys on Patreon make a huge difference in making such projects possible in the first place, so thank you very much for your support. Now let's get into it. In 135th scale we usually get only one type of track for all Panzer 1 based vehicles plus the multi or half track. That's not historical accurate, but I can understand the reasons behind it and I would expect the general public's willingness of dealing with that amount of such small parts and their particular detail to be, well, let's say, limited. Nevertheless, we should have a look at them. In 135th scale, we can make out at least two variants of guide horns. The early one has a more triangular shape and its shell is broken through. When we have a look at period photographs, we can find this type of track on almost every Panzer 1 Ausführung A, model designation A, I mean. Every model designation B I was looking at had more rounded shaped guide horns with a solid shell out of the factory. Starting in 1940 about, the Panzer 1 was phased out and converted to other, mostly real line operating variants. Most of these variants do have the later type as well, disregarding of their chassis model designation. On some well-preserved later track links, we can find ice cleats, but only on the newer ones, on the well-preserved ones, I would either expect them to wear quickly or being limited to only some batches or manufacturers only. Nevertheless, the printer can make them show up, so why not go for it? Finally, there are attachments or accessories for these tracks, the Gabelstollen. The word is made up from the shape of that fork attaching to the track link, that's the Gabel in German, and the variant of what I would translate with ice cleats or spikes in this case, that's the Stollen. Same accessory was used for the Panzer II tracks as well, so it's nice to have them already done. This puts me at about nine different combinations I did find reference for. Of course, we can't expect manufacturers to have injection molds for all different variants of Panzer 1 tracks, and that's where 3D printing can aid us. Let's talk quickly about how I make these tracks now. I told you already I upgraded everything during the last weeks printer-wise from a chromatic 50 micron LCD printer to a monochromatic 35 micron LCD printer, giving me about a increase of 30% in resolution and cutting the print time in half due to the higher transmission value of monochromatic displays. I will go in full detail in a future video. Right now it's just a starting doing things the proper way instead of cheap fast crap. Eh, okay, together with the machine I switched out my resin from standard to water washable resin. It is a bit less smelly and uses, as its name suggests, water as a cleaning agent. Otherwise it doesn't behave very different as far as I can tell more or less a quality life improvement on my side. Part design is completely new now. I use the proper pitch and go as fine as I would dare. There is still some mechanical load on these tracks and well, let's face it, white metal has more favorable material properties for track links, aka they are not so brittle than resin is. That said, on the positive side, we should now have passed the resolution limit for casted tracks. They are a little bit more coarse in <laughs> than our printed ones. We can print rare variants not suited for commercial production and bottom line, we can save a lot of money in the long run, I think. I did do some experiments with supports as well, included nesting parts for maximum part count, finally settled with the links printed upright 
and supported in a way that makes them very easy to pick up and clean. Post-processing of the parts is now done with a dedicated washing and curing machine. One note about the washing agent. Yes, it is water and dish cleaner, but still it's toxic and hazardous to the environment. So after being contaminated with resin, treat it the proper way and don't flush it down the toilet, for example. I washed these parts for about 24 minutes, three times six minutes in a dirty bath and six minutes in a second stage with cleaner water. The machine creates its own vertex, spilling around fresh water over the parts uh, surface. But these tracks are still tightly crammed together and the density of the part placement is directly related to how well you can clean your parts. At the moment none of the holes are clogged anymore and no residue stays on the link, but compared to common recommendation, community knowledge, the washing time is very high in this case. After washing the parts I let them dry, wrapped into a kitchen towel, place it in a dark box. Exposure to sunlight or UV light in general would otherwise cause the raft, that's the part where the links are printed on, would warp extremely and the parts are still very soft after washing. In order to get the parts to a hardness where we can actually start manipulating them, post curing is necessary. This is done on the same machine as well, exposing the printed part to high intensity UV light multiple times at multiple angles. The machine does not put them to nominal hardness, but at least it makes them less soft. Placing them on the window still for a day would bring them or would hard them completely through. As a small bench aid for post curing I use as well a UV hardener made for fingernail extensions that works quite well too. With the post processing done it's now time for the more boring part, the assembly. I will make this very short, it, even so it took the most time to get all my tracks together. First we need to remove the supports and this is much faster now, the supports make the track link laying at a 45 degree angle, making it possible to pick it up with tweezers at their strongest point. Supports can then be removed with ease just using the fingers. It takes about 20 minutes per side for the vehicle to yeah, get rid of all the supports and studs that are still attached to them. For assembling the track links I still use my microscope at about 4x magnification. Don't let this intimidate you, I'm just used to work with these at university and I find them much more universal and versatile than magnification glasses for example, since it allows me to take very precise measurements as well. There's no need to own one if you're only doing scale models however. The new design uses much tighter tolerances and clearances, making this individual link a push fit. After some testing, I do prefer this over the self-sacking properties of my initial design. It took me about three hours in total for a full set from removing the parts from the raft till I was ready to mount them on the vehicle. That's including both sides. Okay, and putting them together in stripes of 10, I mixed in some Gabelstollen in this case for the Flakpanzer 1 and finally joined them together permanently with 0.3mm copper wire using tweezers first followed by a dull sprue cutter to seat them fully where necessary. Finally I would like to compare them against TriStar Dragon and Italeri just to see if they are a proper upgrade to at least some of the kits out there. Italeri first, I can see very clearly my printed ones are much finer in detail. The running profile is less pronounced however, this is something I fixed in the final version of mine, we see an example at the end of the video. Italeri's guide horns lack the proper bowl shape and they are too small. I think it's fair to say that mine are the clear winner in this race. Next ones up are by TriStar, nowadays owned and branded by Hobby Boss, they are geometry wise pretty good. They even slot into mine. My printed ones are not quite as wide, making them more to scale. Detail is similar, mine are fine on some areas, just the sleeves are a compromise for them being workable. TriStar gave its guide horns the proper bowl shape, 
but they still have flash on almost every single link I have checked. Compare this to mine with just having one support mark on each guide horn on the side towards the vehicle. I would say my printed ones win for being less flashy and workable, but still it's a close race I guess. Ok, final candidate, magic tracks. Ever wondered what makes magic tracks magic? They have a little shape on the sleeves making them interlock. Well, I think we have found our master here. Only one negative thing I can tell you, the dragon ones are too long, giving them a finer impression, but this is out of scale. Material thickness is close to equal to mine, but my sleeves again, guide horns equally fine on both. Look, I know the 38 T magic tracks for example, they even have cast marks for the manufacturer and are about the same size than Panzer 1 tracks. It's a pity Dragon doesn't do them anymore, yet still not workable, but I think the clear winner in detail I have to admit. Still can roast them by saying mine come in all variants and have ice cleats for example, but that would make me a poor second winner, wouldn't it? Now as a final summary. I would say printed tracks are a valid replacement and upgrade in many cases for almost all tracks that are included in our kits. Something I will prove in a, every project that is to come from here on. However, if a kit manufacturer or an aftermarket brand goes all in with injection molding, there is no chance to keep up with the possible detail at the moment. And this is where I would like to leave you guys for this week. If you have enjoyed the video, leave me a like, comment your questions or thoughts about 3D printed tracks in the comment section down below. I see you next Friday with something to paint and weather again. Happy modeling. Until then, stay safe. See you.